All right, well, hi, everybody. So here we are. Um, we're learning about genetic drift today. So what we got going on is you guys have already looked up some videos and read some articles about what genetic drift is, but I just want to add a little bit more information to really send this topic home. So genetic drift are changes in gene frequencies in a population due to the chance or random events. So if we look down here, I have an image of a bottle and we have our original population here. We have, let's see, one, two, 10 blue alleles and we have 10 red alleles. So in our original population, our parent population, we have an even number, an even frequency, 50-50 of red and blue alleles. In our second or our first generation from our parents, we actually, due to random chance, we have more individuals with blue alleles than they do red alleles. And if we keep moving down from generation to generation, we actually keep decreasing in the amount of red alleles that are found in our population. If we go one more, we actually see that we actually increase by one red allele. So we could actually because of genetic drift, actually start increasing and our population could eventually bounce back to what our parent, our parent population was. But in this case, when we make one final jump, due to that random chance, all of those red alleles have been deleted from our population. So the way genetic drift works is it makes the biggest effect on these small populations. So really commonly found on islands where we have uh, endemic species that migrated or accidentally found their way to the island from the, the mainland. In South America, this is pretty common. Africa's got a whole bunch of isle, or islands along the coast where those species accidentally migrated to those islands. So we see a lot of genetic drift in these populations. And now there are two types of genetic drift that we can talk about. The first type is what we call founder effect. And what founder effect is what I was just talking about, where we have an ancestral population. So here in this picture, we have an island that is dominated by orange, black, white butterflies. And the founder effect says that these butterflies, due to nature, they could get blown around, whatever, end up migrating to this animal-less island here. So on the original, the ancestral population, you can see that we actually had blue, or uh, not blue, I'm sorry, white butterflies. With the population that migrated, that founded this new island, this newly discovered island, we don't have any butterflies that have that white pigment or lack of pigment. So what we have here is we have an orange butterfly and two black butterflies. So we could expect that the future population, due to the founder effect, we will see only orange or black butterflies. If for some reason a white butterfly were to make its way to this island, then we could start to see more white pigment appear in this population. But unless that occurs, this population on this new island, this newly discovered island, will only consist of orange or black butterflies. So these are very common on islands. Most islands we see this type of situation happen because island biology makes it very easily for animals or species to be wiped out due to natural events. And a good example of a species that is an endemic species or evolved on an island, other than butterflies of course, are Komodo dragons, the largest reptile on the planet. And these lizards, these dragons, migrated from an other, or uh, accidentally drifted probably on a log across the ocean, landed on this island, and were able to become the top predator because there weren't any other uh, animals in that on that island that were able to keep it from uh, evolving. So Komodo dragons are a good, an or a good uh, example of a founder effect here. 
Uh, a really good video that could help you is this island biology video that I have linked down here. If you want to take a look at that, it talks about an island off the coast of Africa that has some really good bi island biology going on there. So our last type of genetic drift are genetic bottlenecks. So genetic bottlenecks are what happens when we have a natural event, such as a hurricane, a tsunami, or a tornado that come in and wipe out a large chunk of our population. So if we look at this bottle here, genetic bottleneck, this bottle here, we have our parent population where we have a lot of yellow individuals and a lot of blue individuals. And then we have a natural event occur, hurricane, tornado, could be a thunderstorm, whatever, comes in and takes this original population and kills off a large chunk of it. And what we end up with is we actually, of these surviving individuals, only two of them are yellow. So as our, these individuals reproduce and move on to the next generation, we actually see that instead of seeing a large number of yellow individuals, we actually have a large number of blue individuals. So these are what a genetic bottleneck is. Uh, and once again, I have a really good video linked here for you called the Mystery Reindeer Death. Uh, happened in Norway. Uh, worth a look. A great example of a genetic bottleneck that can occur because of natural events. Uh, if you have any more questions on this, you guys can keep working on your project that I have you doing right now. Um, have a good rest of your day.